What's going on everybody? Welcome back. And as you can see, this is gonna be a fun one. We've got gold foiling, engine install, and wiring that we get to tackle in this upcoming video. And of course, if you're enjoying the video, hit the like button. And if you really wanna follow along, please subscribe. Helps me out dramatically. Now, on with the show. So while we're running the Suzuki Hayabusa and it's a great engine, the exhaust is gonna come out at the front of the motor. So we've already got gold foil on this panel here that's gonna separate the engine bay from the fuel cell. But we're also gonna to need to protect some of these bars here because the exhaust is either gonna come out through this space or the space on the other side, depending on what racetrack we go to. So to get started on the gold foiling, I really don't need a lot. I've got a right angle square, pair of scissors, a knife, and I've got this cutting board that I'm not sure I'm gonna really even use. And of course I've got the gold foil. Before I started this video though, I tried my best to start making templates. There's no better proof that I've got a little bit of OCD rather than I've got templates cut out for the gussets and some of the radiuses for the tubes that I need to cut. So now that we're done covering the gussets in gold foil, both inside and outside, we get to move on to wrapping the tubes themselves. Now some high school math comes in really handy and just remembering that pi is 3.14. So now that we've gotten the gold foil on the car, I'm gonna go ahead and install the floor, then we get to install the engine. So considering this is the first time we're gonna be fitting a Suzuki Hayabusa into my car, I figured I should go over the primary changes we had to make to go from the 1000cc GSXR up to the Suzuki Hayabusa. To start, we've got a whole new rear frame from here back with the exception of the lower truss. All of these tubes and everything back is brand new. What you can see is there's a lot more width, especially down here at the bottom to make room for the wider Suzuki Hayabusa. The termination point back here stays unchanged though. So this hoop and that piece of the spar is the same whether it's a thousand cc or a Suzuki Hayabusa. The difference on the spar though is the side plates. Now the side plates have the different locations for the back of the motor for the Suzuki Hayabusa. We also, as you can see, I've got hardware down here. That's because we boxed in the bottom of my spar. So that will hopefully add to the rigidity of it. And just like that, I have a Suzuki Hayabusa powered store. Even though we've still got a long way to go, we've only got the motor being held in by the two engine mounts. We still have to finish off machining the front ones and the diagonal tubes. We're gonna do that later. Right now, we're gonna go over the main reason I wanted to get this into my car. So this, besides the miscellaneous box under my feet, is everything electronic 
I need to fit into my store. With the exception of the Smarty Cam lenses, my rain light, and radio, radio harness, G, uh, radio antenna. What we have in front of you, starting from left, your right, we've got uh, Life ECU, Life PDU, uh, Life PDU harness, Life PDU uh, power cable, transponder, my four shock pots, uh, Lambda sensor, starter solenoid, shift ram, power uh, master kill switch, shift tech valve body and blipper, um, harness for the ADL3 dash, as well as the GPS and inertia sensor, shift lights, steering sensor or steering angle sensor. Over here, we've got the ECU harness for the Life ECU, uh, Flagtronics with all of its components and the CAN bus compatibility, water pump, ADL3 dash, brake pressure sensors, my cooling fan, Smarty Cam version three, rectifier, charging circuit, miscellaneous connectors and switches. This is a lot of stuff. So I guess most importantly, why did I go this route? Well, to do the Hayabusa properly, you wanna run a dry sump. In order to run the dry sump and more importantly, drive the scavenge pump, you're running an electric water pump. While we're making a custom wiring harness, there's no reason not to put a cooling fan just to make sure that you don't find yourself cooking the car. Besides that, why go the other route? Why depart from running the factory or factory style ECU wiring harness with an auxiliary gear box control unit that so many stores do? Um, and that's a good question. I really liked um, the versatility of going this route. If I ever decide to change anything, the ECU PDU system I have will be able to run any motor or any bike powered power plant forever. And if I really wanted to change, I'd simply just need to have Franz at the Motorsports whip me up a new ECU wiring harness. And then it'd just be as simple as programming something different. So that was a really big advantageous thing for me. But more importantly, um, I've just found myself at my wits end trying to troubleshoot modified ECU harnesses, uh, work around some stuff here and there. And I've just seen a lot of inconsistency with the varying gearbox control units and ver various like gearbox control systems that are incorporated into the ECUs that I realized very early on that in order to do this right, I really should just try to go for a full pro system. And I don't regret it. So this is all new, never been in a car. Basically, Franz put the system together off of measurements I made, um, and they were my best guesses at the time. So the right thing to do, now that I've got a car with an engine, is to at least lay everything out where it's supposed to go and make sure everything fits. So that's what we're gonna do with the rest of today. So to really test how everything fits, one of the most important things we've gotta put on the car is the throttle bodies. So here we're just gonna drape the ECU engine harness over the motor and start plugging everything in. Now some stuff doesn't have a home yet, like you see the Lambda wire or the O2 sensor wire up at the top, but we can start plugging in the coil packs, cam sensors, upper and lower fuel injectors, as well as coolant temperature, gear position, and we're gonna try to do the crank trigger. Now, we don't have a map sensor with this system at Franz's recommendation because he feels we can do the math and make sure that just with the TPS and RPM that we can properly tune the car. So now that we've got the engine ECU harness in place, we need to connect the ECU to the harness. From there, we're gonna zip tie it in place just to make sure that the PDU works with it. So I'm gonna install the PDU underneath the ECU and we're gonna zip tie it into place here. Now, a PDU is a power distribution unit that basically takes the place of mechanical components such as fuses and relays. And that means it's gonna run the water pump, gonna run the cooling fan, it's gonna command the solenoids for the air shifter, and it's also gonna be what receives the switches from the ignition switch, rain light, as well as the shifting buttons. 
So we're gonna install the Motec dash in the harness now, and even though it's an ADL3, which is an older model, it's a very capable dash. Now, some of the original sensors are not gonna be on the car because we're just gonna take over and have the information pushed via the CAN bus from the ECU. But this harness still has a lot of work to do. It will cover all four shock pots as well as all four corner speed sensors. We also have a front and rear brake pressure, a steering angle sensor, and it also has to communicate with a G-load sensor and a GPS sensor. We also have some connections to be made to the steering wheel so I can press buttons to acknowledge systems on my dash. And just like that, I've turned my race car into a proper hot mess. It seems absolutely chaotic, but I'm thrilled because everything's at least gonna make it where it needs to go. There's only two issues so far. One of them being, I've gotta figure out how to go from a three pin connector to a four pin connector for my shifter. And then obviously, like I mentioned earlier, how do I fit everything on the CAN bus? Right now, I can at least make my ECU talk to my dash and the PDU talk to the dash. I need to figure out how to tee in the Smarty Cam and if possible, the Flagtronics. That's a question I've got to get to Franz and Dave, um, both between the two of them. Dave being in charge of the ADL3, its harness, and then Franz and his ECU PDU uh, program we did. Between the two of them, we're hopefully gonna come up with a solution. But what a day. Obviously, we got the gold foil on, we've got an engine in my car, and we've got the wiring harness that can do everything I need it to do. Thank you all for watching. If you wanna keep track of this entire build and the story that's gonna come next year, please subscribe. And if you really enjoyed the video, hit the like button. It helps a lot. For now, have a great night. We'll see you all in the next video. Can't believe it took me this long to finally be able to sit in this girl. God, I miss this.